This question comes to us from Jay, and Jay writes this, What happens when Christians fail to see themselves as simultaneously sinner and saint? In other words, what happens when Christians fail to realize that they still have that sinful old Adam, that sinful nature, after they become Christians? Thanks for the help, Jay. Jay, great question. This is really important to get. When we fail to realize that we have this original sin and the effects of this original sin stay with us even after we're baptized, oh, the, the, the implications of this are devastating. Now think about this. If you fail to realize that you're still a sinner, then you actually end up leaving Jesus. I mean, it's just tragic to think we end up leaving Christ. In other words, our baptism becomes a past event. Jesus can even become a past event, and we end up going the way of a false Christ. We establish and grab a hold of a false Christ that helps us in our own endeavors of perfecting holiness on our own. But the reality of all of this is that we are sinners through and through, and we're also saints being baptized into Christ. And because of this, because of our malady of sin, we will never move beyond Jesus. It's kind of like our other false Christ that we talked about in a previous episode. So when it comes to this, we must always remember that we are always sinners. And because we always sin, we daily need the medicine of forgiveness. We daily need the real Jesus Christ to come to us, to grant us forgiveness, life, and salvation. We need the Holy Spirit through the Word and Sacrament to come to us every single day and every single week, giving us those holy impulses to live our life as Christians. But when we leave that behind, when we think that we have somehow moved beyond being a sinner, then we live by our own strength and our own endeavors. And the consequence of this is just completely devastating. We end up living by our own strength and we go, ah, geez, I hate to say this, we end up going to hell. It's always Jesus. It's always Jesus, the real Jesus for you, for the forgiveness of sins every single day, every single moment until he takes us home with him forever. I hope this helps and we'll catch you next time. Well, if the Apostle Paul did have power to overcome strength in his own sin, well, he wouldn't need Jesus. I mean, would we need Jesus if we could overcome sin in our own power? Of course not. But the reality is this, is that we have something called original sin. And with original sin, this desire, this addiction to sin, we are always addicted to sin. We're always prone to wander and prone to leave the God that we love. We chase after all the different fancy poisonous sins that are out there. Sin that looks and tastes sweet, but in the end damns and kills us. So when it comes down to understanding sin, it is like a deep stain in our condition. And no matter how hard we scrub, no matter how hard we try, we can never overcome it. And so when we come to Romans chapter 7, we see the Apostle Paul simply get to the point where he throws his hands up in the air and says, What a wretched man that I am. Who will save me from this body of sin and death? And he goes to where? Jesus. He doesn't go to a false Christ. He goes to the real Jesus, the real Jesus Christ who has victory for us, the real Jesus Christ where there's no condemnation in him, no condemnation for our sin. But in Jesus Christ, we are given grace and salvation, forgiveness and life forever and ever. This question comes to us from Kay, and Kay writes this, Pastor Richard, my wife's family gets on me when I drink a beer around them. They tell me that I'm not being a good Christian witness by having a beer. Are they right? Thanks, Kay. Okay, this is a great question in considering beer itself. Now, let's just set the stage on this. It's kind of a complex situation and complex question that you offer. When it comes to alcohol, we have to affirm first and foremost that drunkenness is no doubt about it. It is a sin. Scripture condemns drunkenness. However, when it comes to drinking in moderation, Scripture does not speak on that. It is something called an adi offer. I know that's kind of a big word, but an adi offer is something that is neither commanded nor forbidden in Scripture. So moderate drinking is not commanded nor forbidden in Scripture. When it comes to drinking beer in moderation in this situation, we do also have to assess a couple other things. If there are, per se, alcoholics around, recovering alcoholics, we want to be sensitive to them. We most definitely want to be sensitive to them, making sure that we do not cause them to stumble just out of Christian love for them. 
However, now here is the big however. If it comes down to somebody creating a false Christ, a false Christ, a new Moses Christ that comes along and makes a law that is neither commanded nor forbidden in the scriptures, such as maybe a friend saying you can't drink a beer in moderation because Jesus commands it. Well, in that case, we are not dealing with a weaker Christian. We're dealing with false theology, a false law. And in that regard, that must be resisted by all means. It must be resisted because it is a false law. It is a false Christ that has been promoted. So just to recap, when it comes to a friend, and maybe that's an alcoholic, we want to be respectful. We don't want to drink around them in order not to offend them and hurt them if they are weak in that area. And also, we want to stay away from drunkenness. But in the regard of somebody creating a law that does not exist in the scripture, well, we do not follow it. In fact, by following it, we would even advocate for something that is not there. So I would encourage you, if that's the case, resist it. Absolutely resist it, because it is not something commanded by the real Lord Jesus Christ in his word. So I hope that helps, and we'll catch you next time. Well, there's no doubt about it that the devil and the world are forces outside of us that indeed attack us. The devil, he prowls around looking to destroy, to kill and steal and destroy our faith. And the world and its ideologies want to lead us on these pursuits of lies that make no sense and lead us away from Christ. However, there's a greater enemy among all three of those, one that is often overlooked, and that enemy is me. Now, you may say to yourself, well, what do you mean by that, Pastor? Yes, the greatest problem that Matt Richard has is Matt Richard, it is my sinful condition. The greatest struggle that you're going to have amongst those other enemies of the world, and yes, that devil that prowls around, is your own sinful nature. It is an internal problem. It is a problem within. Sin springs forth from your sinful condition. So therefore, when it comes to combat this sin, we need the Lord Jesus Christ to do a war with us, the Holy Spirit, through the Word and Sacrament, to what? To have a civil war within. That is the Christian life. We are at a war with ourselves, constantly battling our sinful nature that wants what it wants and wants it right now. However, the Lord's Holy Spirit comes to us and it wars against this sinful old Adam, this sinful nature, constantly putting it to death and raising up this new man in Christ so that we might walk in newness of life.